before staying back, and hope you all got the stamps as was alluded to. Uh, one of the things uh, we want to also talk today was around how can we manage the complexities around the microservices <coughs> with an API management platform like Apogee. Myself, Rakshit, uh, part of the uh, Google Asia Pacific team for API management. Been with Apogee and Google now for eight years now. So one of our core things is we love APIs, that's what we do. And as part of the break and everything else I spoke to, a uh, few things that people came back and told me was they still didn't understand APIs. So I thought, let me put some 20 slides around what are microservices? So and spend some time on it. What do you guys think? Should we do it? You all been drenched with microservices words since morning? So I will definitely not do that, so I'll not go into more into depths of the APIs and uh, so I'll skip the microservices, but thought it'll take a few key minutes on level setting a few things. So uh, I know there have been like well-qualified speakers before me who spent a lot of time on explaining microservices, why we should do microservices, which strategy is the right one to use, should we break them up, is it based on business logic, is it based on trying to get organizational benefits, is it to get agility. So for sure from my experience there is no one single definition around microservices but definitely given the context of the various sessions you have attended since morning, you would have got the gist around why microservices and what are the ways to get started. So. You would also have seen some of the stack that really came out today. Google Cloud Foundry, Docker, Kubernetes. The choice are quite vast in the market today. And again, on what you see on your right hand side and my left hand side is definitely the benefits around those. Definitely key criteria is why people really are looking at using them. So the choice being this, the technology stack that people are going to use, uh, is definitely promising in ensuring that enterprises can really get more agile and drive business benefits. And end of the day, it's around the experience that they can create with the services. So let me just stop here around the microservices, but a few key things I wanted to use was, this is reality whether we like it or not. Hybrid, multi-cloud is happening. We are seeing enterprises evolve, some form or shape, experiment, use. And again, the, the cloud providers, Google Cloud, uh, AWS, Azure, in-house players, local country players. So the choice of cloud is obvious, which means the services are going to be deployed in multiple places, whether we like it or not. So which means you're going to have the on-premise systems. You're going to have various services and technologies and stack that you use and build. Obviously for good reasons of scalability and ability to have them made available on demand basis, reduce the cost. So the driving factors are definitely there, which is pushing towards the, the multi-cloud strategy. And all said and done, when you are going to be in a world which is going to be more holistic with multi-cloud in nature, the ability to stitch things back is definitely something very, very important. Because whichever cloud you pick and choose, wherever you deploy them and whatever service stack you choose, it's, it's evident that ability to use things on-premise and on the cloud of your choice is very important. And there are definitely good reasons why people are moving into cloud, because the cost factor could be one, or ability to provide scaling on demand when it's needed, burst capacity, auto healing capacity where cloud provider takes care of maintenance, monitoring, upgrades and everything else. Literally taking away the pain from the IT call. The containers are definitely the, the good reason why it makes it even more easier. So you, you auto heal, you build, destroy, you take care of deploying like 100 times a day, 100 times a minute. So definitely the driving factors towards the microservices are some of these two key basic underlying principles. But more than anything else, we, we also started seeing that why you build services is for consumption. 
And what defines them is the APIs through which they make them available for people to consume. So REST APIs have something that have really helped the consumption to be driven, making microservices to be even more successful than what they are. So let me now switch to the, the more concrete terms around what does the role of an API really play in all of this? Like, why is it so important? And why are we talking about API management as a separate topic by itself? So, end of the day, uh, we don't build services for fun. And services don't lie in a corner without being unused. They are definitely meant for consumption. The, the combination of the, the lower tier is enterprise specific. There can be various combinations of legacy, existing microservices, cloud, legacy systems, or are you consuming services from somebody else. But end of the day, that exposes an API, and these make it easier for consumption across various footprint, whether it's a mobile app, it's a website, it's a KISOC or an IoT device. These are where it actually is consumed. So let me ask you a quick question. Does anybody know uh, what is Google Chrome? And how is it built and deployed? Does anybody know what Uber is using as a stack? How many people really worry about what Spotify is built on? Do we really care? Because at the end of the day, what really matters is around consuming those services, not in terms of what it's built on. Yes, within an enterprise, it's very, very important what stack you use and build upon. But for the consumption side, they really don't need to know the complexity, which is what an API really does. It just facades the underlying complexity, makes it simple. I pass something and I get something back. I click on a playlist, I click on a song, something comes back and it just starts playing on my phone. When I click on pay now, there's something that's happening somewhere where it's taking my information and doing a fund transfer. So APIs are literally a contract. It's just telling something to be done it doesn't care whether it's on which machine, whether it's on cloud, whether it's on-premise. Something is being done when you actually invoke it. That's predominantly what an API is literally doing end of the day. And if you now think about it, APIs have been around for quite some time. And it's been in different forms and shapes and different flavors, technologies. But the core fundamentals of why it's been there is exactly the same thing. And now, if you're really trying to take it to the next level, it's like, it's, it's all about user experience, whether omnichannel, whether it's IoT, whether it's Google Home, it's Alexa, or you're trying to use your watch. It's, it's end of the day, it's about literally driving those experience. So APS literally now take care of putting all the services that you see on the back end of an enterprise, literally exposing them out, which gets consumed now. And this, the complexity slightly increases now when you start looking at the end consumers using those and there are those partners who consume and build stuff on top of it. Or it's for employees in different, uh, uh, within an enterprise, within a bank, within an actual workshop or within a warehouse where it's being used. So where it is being used, how it's being used, on what form factor it's being used, definitely drives a big impact on how the various services are being consumed now. So what we literally try to do, uh, and by, by no means it's a gesture of saying what's important, whether it's Pivotal or Apigee, so just putting it as upfront. What we are literally looking at is the digital value chain. It's about how do we literally drive the user consumption across whatever form factors in whoever is building them. So Apigee is literally focused on how do we help the consumption side of these services? How do you build them? How do you manage them? How do you provide access to people? How do you secure them? Is it discoverable? So that's where a lot of challenges that we are trying to solve. Why enterprises focus a lot on building the core services using Pivotal Cloud Foundry or various other stacks that you can choose. So why you focus a lot on that, how we can bring to the help an enterprise is wrap them, make it easier, and getting them addressable and usable. So APIs and microservices are quite complementary, whether it is a monolithic system or a microservices. The effect and the usage are slightly different in different places, because what works with a monolithic system 
you need a lot more heavyweight transformation, mediation, and a lot of those kinds of capabilities. But when a microservices layer, you're looking at more about discoverability, analytics, how do you provide a secure governance around the microservices layer so that people can just go have the control of building the core services in stack of their choice. So I thought I'd just take a few key examples and look at uh, what does it really mean once you build an actual API on a microservices. So again, we talked about the, the various form factors in which people use in the house, external partner ecosystem. So it's about how do you really make it discoverable for them? Do they have a mechanism for going and searching? Right? Nobody starts off with 5,832 microservices. It's a gradual growth. You start building them. You don't put an army and say, here we are going to have these 10,000 services. As the services get built out, are there a mechanism through which they're literally discoverable? Can people really get to know how to reuse them? How do I find out what services exist today? Can I get access to those? Can I test them out? Is there documentation that I can actually look at? So that is one part of the challenge which is very critical in ensuring that reusability as it states really works within an enterprise or externally outside an enterprise. Second is, is it uh, a standardized approach which reduces the amount of effort required for maintaining and managing the services? If every team starts talking to one another and say, where is this one deployed? Can I know how to use them? You're literally wasting time in trying to find out what's already existing. So is it a simplified mechanism through which you literally have a common place where people can literally go search, find, play around, get comfortable, then start using them? Because all you're looking at is consumption of the services. And it's also about the the security and governance around these because obviously security is a wide topic so I'm not going to go into the depths of it but you're going to start looking at how do I secure my services, how can I have a common governance layer while giving the flexibility for developers to focus on building the microservices. You don't want every developer to embed those micro granular level of security level, governance level, access control level within the microservice itself. So how do you now bring it to a layer above which decouples the underlying system in such a way that the services get to be built, deployed, managed in true microservices principle while the governance, security, threat protection and everything else is done at a layer above which is more meaningful in doing it in real life. The other thing is literally around what we call as analytics which is, if you really look at analytics within an enterprise, there is the, the engineering team that built the services, there is a business team that really wants to know what's deployed, what's working, what's not working, there is an actual DevOps team as you really call it, they want to know like what's the uptime, what's the SLA. So the kind of analytics that we see across an enterprise is quite different. And the visibility level is very important in making decisions on what are you going to really build next? Which services will you really keep up? Which one do you want to deprecate? Which versions of your APIs are really working? And this is very important because the decisions you take on what you keep and how much you run, how much you deprecate is going to make a decision on what's going to be your IT budget and what's going to be the developer cost in maintaining those services. If you have services deployed and only two API calls come in a year, is it worthwhile in having a very high effect of those two API calls that translates to a business revenue to keep them up? Or is it just somebody trying to make a ping and check whether it's up and running or not? So the visibility is very, very important in making decisions across the enterprise, which is what we really look at. So to put all these three together, we are literally looking at you don't want to have those old ways in new bottle now because when people start doing so uh, standardization, governance, you literally have people going and building things on their own, either as a silos, pockets, or you now have people going and building microservices that's literally running things haywire. So you don't want to have the same end results of following a new approach. And while doing the, 
the decoupled approach of giving the flexibility and benefits. You don't want to compromise the enterprise by having them expose services which people can use and abuse. Visibility which becomes even more important around those, along with trying to look at are there smart ways of trying to do bot detections because you now have so many services available and not everybody is going to make like 10,000 API calls to really bring something down. Things are getting a lot more smarter. You know, bots are becoming more sophisticated in nature. So it's not going to be a blip on a graph that shows that, hey, this service is being abused. So you literally need more sophisticated mechanisms that use machine learning and AI capabilities to make sense of how the threats are really coming in, how they are being used and abused. So, which is where Apache tries to bring the API management platform, solving a range of these uh, problems that we see with enterprises so that the complexities do not become a burden for adopting new approaches. Whether you start with a, an existing uh, services or you break it down into a centralized approach where you say, I want to wrap up all my microservices so the entities like uh, security, transformation, mediation, caching, token generation, about in terms of getting analytics, visibility, a lot of these various things that we're talking about, the elites, can be moved to a common layer that wraps it up. Literally decoupling so that the microservices still focus on making those core capabilities that is actually built for. Second is, if you're literally looking at does this add into my response time? Is this gonna bring in my latency? Is it gonna increase by having a layer in between? We have a non-invasive approach of having a micro gateway as well, which pretty much sits within the microservices so that it's a sidecar proxy, whether we are using Pivotal Cloud Foundry or you're building a microservices using Node.js, we have a micro gateway that sits very close or within as part of the actual microservice. So the developers do not have to go and code something extra. I do not have to make massive efforts to say, how do I bring in this management capabilities to my microservice is not a big question anymore. So the adoption literally becomes quite easy. And moreover, what we have seen is not every enterprise has a combination of various stacks. So we have seen enterprises having CRM systems, <coughs> Uh, if it's a bank, it's going to be having different core banking systems. They may have internal banking systems for retail e-commerce. They're built on stacks that have been there for quite some time. So they're not going to primarily switch and say, let's go dump everything and start doing everything as a microservice. So you're going to have a combination of various enterprises having existing services built and investments that are going to still stay. Why? You're going to have a constant migration to either make it more leaner, easier for consumption, and start building out those microservices. So when you've got a combination of existing services that are built in various technologies, and the new services you're trying to build in parallel, you're literally looking at, is there a mechanism to put like a simple facade in place? So what are we talking about here? Having the work with large enterprises, we have seen this as a, a gradual transformation path where you have existing services, whether on-premise or cloud or wherever they exist today in whatever form and shape. You gradually start looking at, can I now decompose those and start creating new microservices? Even before you jump on this bandwagon and start doing all of this, we literally look at who is consuming those? Where are they being consumed? What would the end result really look like? So we help our customers try to make it, this journey a lot more easier by defining the end state and then creating what we call as a facade, as a proxy. And then customers go about now taking piece by piece and decomposing them, going back to the first few slides that I talked about, the facade. So that you can do the underlying transformation projects without having any impact. As long as the contracts stay in place, as long as the request response stay intact, you literally have no impact on the consumption side. And by doing that, we also try to bring in other capabilities like how do you really do edge caching without having to go buy a separate product? How do you take care of trying to do 
newer forms of authentication authorization? Can we now integrate with new uh, cloud authentication services? Can I use Google Authenticate service? Can I use Ping Federate, Okta? So a lot of these are now being wrapped up in such a way that you literally are not baking them into the underlying microservices. With this decoupled approach, you have the flexibility of changing your underlying systems, technologies, and swapping them without having any foreseeable impact on the consumption side. We have had customers who went through with migration from using one authentication service to another. All we did was generating new tokens and repopulating them without having anybody to really log out. So this makes it seamless in such a way that you are now making migration from technologies from one system like, like older Active Directory LDAP to newer forms of authentication authorization without any compromise. And moreover, having this bridge in between, you are now trying to filter out a lot of frivolous requests, unwanted requests, SQL injections, DOS attacks, traffic management, all of those filtering done at the edge of the enterprise. Can it not be done in my underlying systems? Can I not stop them? Can I not lock those things in my systems and services? Obviously you can. But trying to filter them out way too early in the actual inbound request literally helps focus these underlying services on actually attending to real requests that do not take away precious time and resources of the enterprise. <clears throat> and while doing this, this also looking at what we call as, how do you monetize these services? You remember one of the few slides we looked at is when you've got different ecosystem play, partner play and an API ecosystem that you want to create, just like how Uber, Grab, Line, pretty much everybody's creating an ecosystem that they want their services to be available through different channels. Monetization becomes another important aspect. It's just not decoupling it for the complexity and the agility, but you're also looking at driving new business models which business can do without having to wait for IT to provide them with assets and APIs. So this really looking at how do we stitch the whole story together is with Pivotal Cloud Foundry, we have had quite a lot of investment that we have done over the last couple of years where Apigee as a product blends and works very well so that you take the code and run it wherever you want, however you want in cloud on-premise. That's where the people really, Cloud Foundry really excels a lot. But the management capabilities on top of it, we believe that there's a very good story why this works together. So both the products have been put together to work very well and they are deeply integrated at the product level, which means using the route services or the sidecar proxy, you are literally bringing in the API management capabilities well into the microservices and applications that you are building. And it's just not limited to that. It can be also to the underlying legacy systems that you can directly work with. It's also available as a wash installer, so works very well in getting it up and running without having to look at different technologies. So this makes it quite easier for having an uptake of underlying services and the platform so that you're not just looking at one single thing, but both of them holistically creating that end-to-end -end digital value chain as we talk. So few, what are the key takeaways? Uh, we are really looking at the whole of morning and afternoon where we looked at why microservices are beneficial, solving real business problems, technology challenges, the benefits, the agility. So given that, it's just a matter of time before microservices are going to evolve to solve a lot of underlying challenges that enterprises are facing. Definitely keep a lookout for those anti-patterns, for sure, in terms of trying to bake in or creating that management capabilities well into the microservices that create complexities that you did not want. So it's not about trying to do SOA with microservices. How do you literally stay clear of making sure that the microservices still stick to what it is meant to be? And APIs and microservices are not too different. It works very well together in trying to drive the benefits of microservices to the next level. And 
API management literally helps in making the, the story complete because the transition is, is not immediate. When enterprises embark on this transition journey from existing systems that they have in place to the new ones that they are building, it's about creating the bridge, which is where the API management really plays well. So I think so like coming towards the last couple of minutes, so I'll just pause it and see if there are any specific questions, any specific thoughts, anything that you want, I'm more happy to share. And by the way, we also have a booth on the next door, so feel free to stop by. Great. Thank you.